Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Finally, with some good news, New Yorkers can rest at peace. Uh, gosh, about four hours ago, the dirty bomb that was, that's been running through New York, been hidden, extremely well hidden, uh, with technology that very few countries in the world would have the ability to do to hide a nuclear device, especially a dirty bomb. Uh, that bomb has been defused. And uh, Hal Turner had reported two days ago, the New York City Emergency Management now telling New Yorkers to have a go bag and be ready to evacuate. And, uh, and, and, and kind of interestingly enough, I'm sitting here putting this together and I just got a video from uh, a friend of mine. Uh, and this is, uh, let's see, this guy here, let me see what his name is. Oh gosh. Uh, I think it's Angry Prepper, if I'm not mistaken, is his channel. Uh, he had just put out a dirty device in New York City, question mark. And he also knew that there were issues going on uh, with this. I'm trying to see if I can, let's see if I can. All right, let me just pull his channel up. Maybe we could do that real quick there just to kind of share some information with you there. He, uh, he really does seem to have some very good stuff, uh, some very good reports. I think if I'm not mistaken, uh, he is a, um, let's see, angry prepper. Um, the angry prepper, here we go again. Let's just, I'll just get to his channel here first. Uh, and what he says here, uh, not on this video here, um, let's just see here real quick here. New York City getting worse every day. Correction, the food crisis. Are you ready? Oh gosh, I don't know where his latest video would be at then. This, that's a year ago. Let's just go to his videos. Maybe we'll find it that way. Um, wow, I, I don't see it. Actually, I don't see the video that I have myself that was shared with me. The one that I have is called A Dirty Device in New York City. And let me put, let me just see if I can search it real quick on his channel. Dirty Device. Um, yeah, here we go, right here. Oh, he, it was two weeks ago. I'm sorry, this was a two week ago video. I thought it was just recently that he did. Uh, but anyway, uh, he was in this video here, uh, he was talking about that it was looking more plausible that it's actually a dirty device, which this is what we'd reported because we knew from the inside. Gosh, this has been going on what now? Three months now? Two months at least? That I first reported all this information to you guys. Uh, that we've been tracking, and I say we, that's the, the government, the U.S. government's been tracking a dirty device uh, in the New York City area. And today, when I was going through a briefing today, I found out that two hours before our briefing, which my briefing was at 5 p.m. Eastern time, that two hours prior to that, that device had been found and it was, the situation was diffused. Uh, and what brought that up was because we were talking about how Turner's report about the emergency management having New Yorkers to have a go bag and ready to evacuate. And I'd ask, was that anything to do with the dirty device that we've been tracking there in New York City there for quite some time? And, uh, and of course, it was always my very disgruntled uh, belief of, uh, of wondering why this hadn't been diffused sooner. And then later I was updated a second time, which I shared with you guys that the reason why it had not been diffused already was because it was being cloaked very, very cleverly. And that meant only a few countries in the world that had that ability. And one of those countries happens to be the little place just south of, uh, oh gosh, Lebanon, that country just south of Lebanon. Of course, Russia would have that capability as well as China. So you got three countries in the world that have the ability to cloak a device like that. And of course, anybody that remembers anything back in September of a certain date in a certain year, which you're not allowed to say that any longer, and the conspiracy theories that ran around that and the certain mm, certain group of people that didn't show up for work that day. And uh, so therefore they were not victims to those towers falling down. 
And, uh, and then, of course, not long ago, all the young uh, acidic Jewish people were told to go to the Catskill Mountains there, to their oasis there, and do it prematurely from the time they normally go. It just seemed very eerily like a repeat of history. So somebody was planning on detonating something fairly nasty, and uh, uh, I've not, it's not been disclosed to me as of yet who was responsible for it, but I'm sure I will find that out here in the coming weeks. So hopefully we can update you guys as well. But anyway, like I said, good news. That has been diffused. So New Yorkers will not have to worry about having their ready-go bag right now. Oh, however, though, the Poseidon, uh, the Russian nuclear submarines, are patrolling both eastern and western seaboards. That is very true as well. Let me just see if we can't jump over here and put that in. Uh, Russian uh, Poseidon. Uh, let's see, how would you spell that? I don't even know how to spell that. Uh, ooh, Poseidon. That's, let's just put nuclear sub drone. That's really what it is. Um, there we go right there. Uh, Russia's unmanned underwater drone is doomsday weapon. Uh, there we go there, Poseidon, P-O-S-E. I didn't know it was P-O-S. But at any rate there, that uh, those submarines that are launched from submarines, little drone subs, are patrolling both our eastern and western seaboards right now. Uh, there is a great concern in Washington that we could end up in nuclear war with Russia. Uh, so I'll be trying to get a little bit more information about that here in the next week or so. Uh, but that is a very real possibility, very, very, very uh, concerning uh, situation that the United States is tracking. And um, and we're going to be talking too. I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about the situation with that. Um, oh gosh, I don't even know. Um, I forget the actual name behind that. But we are dealing with a situation of um, here in the United States, or actually globally, a New World Order that is rapidly approaching, wherein we would basically be like China. You would be underneath a, uh, a, a totalitarian system that uh, judges you based on your social credit score, and the world's economy will collapse, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. As it was said to me today, though, once again, we got into that issue there, you know, is this really going to be something they're going to pull off soon? Uh, and I was told that uh, the only way they can try to pull this off and their plans are to do it is under two possibility of conditions, two major catastrophic events that could happen on the Earth. Both of those conditions are very much a real possibility. One of those would be a nuclear strike on this nation. The other, as I've been told, would be an asteroid hitting the planet. Um, and they said that's a real pops possibility as well. Uh, we are tracking, there is a swarm of those, about a thousand if I'm not mistaken, of uh, asteroids that are headed towards our planet. And uh, of course the Secret Space Force has been working on trying to take out as many as they possibly can. Uh, we're still looking a year, two years away. I'm not sure. I've not been given an actual date on that, waiting to get some updates on that issue there. But even those, though, are not planet killers. Again, I want to make sure I do stress that. Those would not be planet killers. These are uh, the type of asteroids that if they were to hit the Earth, let's say if it were to hit uh, Birmingham, Alabama, it'd be an asteroid that would take out a city like that. So something that would be catastrophic, but yet not uh, totally deb debilitating to the United States. So this is what they are looking for, or that, or a nuclear war with Russia, they would actually take, and uh, they said there'd be enough damage that they would be able to justify bringing in that system of New World Order that would bring about their social credit score. And I did ask, because I was asked by a former Marine captain that wanted to know, and I actually have not responded to him as of yet, but uh, was asking about those that are involved uh, with that. Let me actually see his question I'll just read you his question. Won't reveal to you who he is, but uh, but just out of uh, interesting enough, I uh, wanted to know. Let's see. Do you have anything? Let's see. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me back it up here. 
Uh, oh gosh, let's see. They're looking for the names of people that are involved because they want to bring about a lit litigation against those involved in doing this, um, this, uh, what do you call this thing here? Uh, I'm trying to be careful not just to bring out anything on just not saying it because I know that there's uh, there's a big issue on this so I'm trying to be very careful about what words I use and I forget the words that I should not use so I'm trying not to say anything as of yet but, um, but anyway I know that this individual here is an attorney and they're wanting to take and bring legal action against people that are involved in this. And of course, I was told that the president of the United States is one of the chief advocates of that program. Anyways, I just say that part of it. So, all right, God bless you guys. Thank you for listening. Uh, don't forget, we thank you for your support of this ministry, this channel that we have here, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Uh, so your support is greatly appreciated. And uh, you can always contact us, reach us by just going to israelinewslive.org and you can support us there online or via uh, uh, or as well uh, via mail. Stephen Benoon at P.O. Box 156 Sunbright, Tennessee. God bless you and thank you for listening.